Over 100 years ago, a murder took place here that was so brutal its victim has never been able to rest. Today, we're going to tell you the story of Sarah Ware and the haunting of the shores of Silver Lake. On the night of September 17, 1898, Sarah Ware was making her way home by foot through the fields and streets of the tiny town of Bucksport, when tragedy struck and she was never seen alive again. Two weeks later, her body was found in an open field. She had been beaten and brutalized so badly that when they picked her up to put her in the wagon and transport her to town, her head fell off of her body. Although a local man for town had been singled out as the prime suspect, the case took so long to bring to trial the key evidence was lost and witnesses recanted their stories against him. The case was dropped and Sarah Ware's murder was never solved. So who was Sarah Ware? Sarah Ware was a 59-year-old divorcee in 1898. This is a time when failed marriages were blamed entirely on the wife. Sarah originally came from a less than wealthy working class family in Nova Scotia. She moved to Bucksport, Maine to marry a man from a prosperous family. Together they raised their children until they were old enough to marry and move away, at which time Sarah and her husband became divorced. Financially destitute and basically ostracized by the community, she moved back to her family in Nova Scotia. Unable to make a go of it there, she decided to return to Bucksport. Now she's back in a social circle that's there to support her husband basically more than it is to support her. That being said, Sarah made her way as best she could, taking odd jobs, cleaning people's homes, and providing childcare services for whoever would hire her. So who killed Sarah Ware? That's what everybody wants to know. Who killed this woman and why? If you read blog entries or websites, you'll probably read that she was a woman of the night or a prostitute. But historical documentation doesn't really support that. In fact, it doesn't support it at all. If you read highly researched documentation, you'll find that Sarah was a very hardworking woman. She was often taken advantage of financially and stiff for payments for jobs she performed for people in town, mostly men. On the night of the murder, it is thought that Sarah was out and about collecting payment for the work she had done in the previous week, and she came across this one residence where she may have encountered trouble. This was the Truergy residence, the residence of a divorced father whose ex-wife had left him and left their two young girls for him to raise. Sarah had worked for him for an extended period of time, but she had quit because she wasn't being paid. And some said that she was even being hit on by the man of the house and she just wasn't interested. William Truergy was known as a man with a short fuse and a hot temper, and he would have been the last stop on Sarah's way home. He became suspect number one when a bloody hammer with his initials was found next to a bloody tarp, and witnesses came forward to say that he hired them to move Sarah's body. So why would Silver Lake be haunted? One of the more obvious reasons is that this is a man-made lake, and where the water sits now, there used to be a cemetery. That's right, there was a cemetery at the bottom of this lake. The cemetery was moved back in the 1930s, up on top of the hill. But there's an undying rumor that all the grave markers were moved, but not necessarily all the bodies. And more to the point of this video, Sarah's body was found not too far from here, and there's a trail that you can walk to that location. But more importantly, Sarah's headless body was buried in a pauper's grave in this cemetery before the lake was put here. So what's a pauper's grave? A pauper's grave is a grave that is usually uh, where someone's buried where there's no significant marker for that, for that burial place, or it may be a wooden marker. So the official story, official story, is that her body was moved from that cemetery to Oak Hill Cemetery and placed behind her mother-in-law and father-in-law next to her ex-husband and their daughter. But not everybody is convinced that that's what happened. It's not unlikely to think that being buried in a pauper's grave that that gravesite was overlooked given that it was 1898 when she was buried and 1930 when they moved the cemetery, 30 odd years if it was a wooden marker it would likely have deteriorated and not been able to be found. In fact, witnesses have come forward to say that they've seen Sarah Ware walking the shores of Silver Lake or peering out over the lake waiting for her killer to be brought to justice. The Sarah Ware murder is officially and legally considered unsolved. But here are some of the facts we've already reviewed. 
William Truergy was considered the prime suspect because he knew Sarah very well as she had worked for him as a live-in nanny for an extended period of time and they did not part ways amicably. After the body was found, a bloody tarp was found next to a bloody hammer with his initials on it. And since Sarah was murdered by being struck in the head repeatedly with a blunt object, the hammer became the prime piece of evidence. Additionally, witnesses had come forward to say that he had paid them to help him move Sarah's body. What we have not elaborated on is that for the time it took for the case to come to trial, the sheriff had died, the undertaker had died, and many of the witnesses had either moved away or had also died. It's thought that some of those witnesses were actually murdered before the trial. One of them was even beaten to death. Sarah Ware's head was of the utmost importance to this case, so it was kept in evidence in a lockbox. But because the case never made it to trial, that head was basically forgotten about for the next 80 years. Somebody came across her head in evidence in recent times and it caused quite a stir with the present day population. Finally, her head was allowed to be reunited with her body. But do you remember the official story of where her body is buried? It's supposed to be in Oak Hill Cemetery. So naturally that's where they put her head. But some people feel her body was never removed from the pauper grave at the bottom of this lake. So it's no wonder Sarah Ware might not be at rest and why she may be haunting the edge of Silver Lake. We hope you enjoyed our presentation of the haunting of Silver Lake and the Sarah Ware story. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up below. Subscribe to our channel and you'll get updates about this video and any videos we post in the future. Remember to share, share, share. Share this video on Facebook and Twitter and any other social media platform you might be on. And we have a comment section down there too. We've shared our opinions and our ideas about this story. If you have your own, please post those there as well. If you know of any other publicly accessible or haunted locations or any historical haunted locations, please let us know about those and maybe we'll do a video about that.